All right, guys, welcome back to another KevCam Night Class tonight. Uh, tonight, have Terrence helping out with any questions, concerns. Terrence, are you with us? Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I think we actually have Ken Merritt. I just see him uh, popping in right here, so we'll get him into the grand scheme of things. Mr. Merritt? I think he's coming in now. But um, so for those, I do see a, a few actually new names in here. Um, so kind of go over the, the basics of uh, the go-to webinar. So all the night classes are done over the um, go-to webinar. If you guys do have questions, and definitely uh, encourage questions as much as you guys want, um, shoot those over in the questions panel of the GoToWebinar, and Terrence will ping me right away and say we got a question, and we'll get an answer right on the spot. Um, these night classes are very casual, laid back, so um, got no problem stopping in the mid scheme of things and uh, getting those questions answered for you guys. So, um, I guess with that being said, too, uh, these night classes are just for training for you guys. Um, so send us over your guys' suggestions, ideas, and we'll send you off some uh, solid cam of swag, hat, and t-shirt. Um, one thing did kind of come to my attention today. We did have a little um, issue with uh, the website to signing up for the night class. If you guys ever run across that, and for those of you guys that are unsure of where to sign up, if you guys don't get the email or anything, if you go under webinars, and go under the KevCam night class, it will pop up right here. And for some reason, um, this uh, three to five axis conversion wasn't showing up for you guys. So um, definitely, if you guys do have that pop up for you guys, send those over to me in email. And I think uh, Rick sent me an email today that it wasn't missing and I appreciate that, Rick. So um, let us know, because we're not always checking it, but, and uh, for those of you guys that don't have my email address, let me put it in here for the chat for you guys. So in the chat, you'll see my email address. Now, all the night classes are recorded for you guys, um, so you guys can go back and review them. Um, also, for people that just couldn't make it for the uh, Tuesday night here, it is on the Solid Cam University channel. Um, if you type in KevCam or Solid Cam University, my ugly mug should pop up for you guys and should bring you over to uh, the channel here. And tons of great information in here for you guys. So I will put the link this channel in there for you guys. And Ken, I seen you popped in. Are you with us? I am. There he is. And for those of you guys that want to see what Ken Merritt looks like, he hates this picture. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that way you guys can put a face to a voice. Sorry, I don't have a one for a picture. Oh, why would you put me in there? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, so I guess getting the ball rolling tonight, um, tonight we are going to be covering um, converting HSM to five axis toolpath. Um, kind of a real neat feature that they have inside the software. Um, it's more kind of geared, uh, driven just for kind of specific applications, um, kind of going through it and seeing what it can and can't do for you guys. Um, basically, what's going on is, in some cases, there's a need to perform machining of 3D parts using the five-axis capabilities. But for example, when you're doing a 3D uh, machining in a deep cavity where it requires a extended uh, ball end mill or, uh, you know, um, I can't think of your bull nose end mill or a flat end mill, that tool really is sticking out uh, quite far to get in some of those deep cavity areas. So what we can actually do is we can program that up in the um, the HSM and then we can actually convert it over to five axis and it's automatically going to convert everything over for us. So, and give me one second here. I lost my questions panel here. There you go. Oh, that was a good comment. So you you might also want to check. Um, Kevin, you're breaking up just a little bit and there seems to be a little delay and a little bit of uh, uh, Max Headroom stuff going on. Did you, you get your MiFi turned on? Yeah, let me uh, just run a quick speed test here. Getting 25 down. Let's see, we're getting for upload speed. Yeah, we're getting. 12, 14 up, so should be good. 
Um, if I do break out, guys, just let me know, and um, I can definitely repeat if, uh, if I'm cutting out for you guys at all. Okay. Let's see, George. I think I remember Ken from IMTS last year. Probably, George. He was, Ken, you were definitely there, weren't you? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So yeah, let's get into 24 7 for about seven days. Yeah. <laughs> Ken loves our trade shows. Um, <laughs> so, with this part right here, we do have. Um, Pretty simple basic part here. Um, we do have some pretty deep um, areas that we need to get down to, and we're kind of more focusing on machining this hub uh, right here in the center. Uh, if we go ahead and open up our HSM operation, just doing a um, simple, easy, constant Z. Um, we're have to use a, a extra long uh, eight millimeter ball end mill. And this one I don't even have a holder on, um, just so we can get down in there. Uh, left the constraint boundaries to automatic, so it kind of cuts everything. Uh, passes, just doing you know a zero wall offset, kind of the same stuff that we've kind of gone over in the past, step down and all that stuff. Um, linking, just doing the climb mill. So that tool path looks nice for us, um, but you can see our tool path right here. But in the end, we want to be able to get to this part using a uh, snubbed up you know, a ball end mill versus having that ball end mill uh, hanging way out uh, with that holder, get some good rigidity and get some good finish call outs for you guys. So um, pretty easy. All you guys really have to do is come over to the convert uh, HSM to five axis milling. And for this first one, we have two different options in here and I'll, co I'll cover both these. Uh, one is converting it over and the other is auto tilt. So the first one right here is converting. It's asking uh, what is the source operation? So what operation do you want it to map out? Now, if we had a bunch of HSM operations in here, this list would be uh, quite a bit larger, but since we've only got the one HSM, we can just grab that. So what we can do from right here is it's basically looking at that operation and kind of converting the tool path over for us. So now we can come in there with our shorter snubbed up uh, end mill here. And you can see that uh, it's quite a bit uh, stuck in the holder there to get access to all this. Um, you know, if we were using this tool with HSM, we'd be gouging our holder as we're kind of coming around here, so. All right, so levels, you'll see everything's kind of grayed out right now. Um, same thing with our link in our uh, approach and links and all that stuff. This is all being kind of pulled over from the HSM side of things, but we still have access to all this stuff. So um, let's get our tool axis control kind of set first. So we'll do uh, tilted by fixed angle. So leave it right at that. Um, now here's the, the, the part that we just need to kind of figure out is what do we want to be tilted to? Now we, we do have all the options in here. Um, we do have tilted relative to cutting condition, uh, tilted by fixed angle, tilted through points, curves, uh, through lines, and tilted point away and curve away. Um, but for this one, I basically just wanna tilt that tool um, out so we're not gouging into that part so we can use that smaller uh, or that shorter snubbed up end mill there. So let's just start off with a 20 and just see what we have. Um, takes a little bit of playing with this first initial round here just to make sure that you know we're not gonna gouge anything. And what it's actually doing right now is it's calculating, taking that HSM operation, kind of carrying over any data that's being used from that operation, carrying it over into the five axis. load up stuff here. All right, so we got our tool path. Pretty much identical tool path to what we were running with our HSM. But now, when we're playing this through, let's just do a solid verify here. You can see, now let me just pause it here you can see that we're kicked over that 20 degrees angle right now. 
So we're not working um, straight up and down anymore. We're more working at an angle. If we kind of do a top view down here, you can see a little bit more what's going on. And it's just staying at a fixed angle of that 20 degrees going all the way around. Um, now, we do have all those other um, five axis op, um, options on, you know, if you want to be tilted, fixed, um, tilted relative to the, the surface and all that stuff. Um, now, like I said, with this particular one, we're just kind of locking it to do a 20 degrees going all the way around. And if I remember right, we will get a little bit of a crash going on here. But you can already see that if we were to use this tool for the standard HSM operation, we'd be uh, hitting that holder going all the way around. Come on. Now, some of the other nice features is that we'll get into um, which is called the auto tilt. Um, it'll be our next operation here. The auto tilt, what it does is it basically pulls, well, it's, it's pulling the exact information over from the 3D HSM, but it's automatically going to tilt just enough to stay away from that holder. Um, you guys can actually put a value in there, and that's the one that kind of more is a little bit more appetizing just for me, just because I don't have to kind of play this all the way through to make sure I'm not going to hit. Um, we don't have to do any verification. Um, we can just know that it's, I can put my distance in there that I want the holder to stay away. Um, we can actually set up a angle range also, and uh, we'll be covering this too, but um, just so it automatically stays tilted and you'll actually see that uh, cutter just bouncing around everywhere, kind of keeping, in contact with just a certain degrees angle of engagement there. So we're we're crashing into our holder now with 20 degrees. Um, so if we come in here and we just kind of kick this over a little bit farther, let's just do 40 degrees. See if we can calculate here. Now Ken brought up uh, a good point um, when we were kind of looking through this together is, you know, and, and you know, a good way to look at some of these tool paths too is, um, you know, look at it as if like you're, how do you want that tool to approach, you know, the material? And if you kind of look at it as if you're, if you're painting, um, if you got a, a spray gun, where do you want that nozzle pointed? Do you want that nozzle pointed more down? Do you want that nozzle to be pointed, you know, straight on with that surface, all that stuff. And let me go to my settings here and we'll go to general. And I'm just gonna kind of skip this ahead here a little bit. So now you can kind of see we're kicked over at 40 degrees now versus the 20, just because we couldn't get by um, with that 20 degrees. And technically, like I said, with the auto tilt feature, it's real nice because up on the top, we really don't need to be tilted that very, that much. Um, we can pretty much go straight up and down. But as we get further down into the cut here, the more that we're going to need to you know, angle that head over just so we're not gouging into the material with the, um, uh, with the holder. Like I said, this is kind of a, it's not something that you guys are going to use every single day. Um, but if you guys are getting into those, you know, deep molds um, where you have to have a really long tool, this is, this is where it's really going to benefit you guys is just so, cause we can get in there with a much uh, shorter. Now, obviously I got a little uh, puck over here. That's not going to work because it's just locked over at 40 degrees. So, 
So my favorite, if we get out of here, and we'll just suppress this for right now, is the auto tilt. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is, as soon as I do a HSM convert and link it to that uh, specific operation, so if we go to, let's do our auto tilt here. As soon as I link it to this operation, the operation over in the tree will automatically be suppressed. Um, so it's basically uh, taken over control. It's suppressed it for you and automatically. Um, you can go back through and unsuppress it if you guys need to make a, a quick change in there. Um, you know, if you need to change the boundary or the passes or step downs or anything like that, um, you can. But as soon as you save and calculate again, it will automatically suppress itself back down again because we still have that um, HSM operation. Uh, it would if I didn't have this one suppressed. Let me unsuppress this. Now, one other thing that I want to cover here is uh, in the source operation. So we were talking about um, with the links, everything's kind of grayed out. Same thing with our levels right now. I don't have any control just because it's pulling all that information from the HSM operation. If you guys do need access to this, uh, you're definitely not locked out of that. If you go over to the link conversion type, instead of using the, the source link, we can use the relink option. And now if we go to our levels, everything's um, open for us to edit. And same thing with the link or the uh, the linking strategy right there. So definitely you guys can come in here and make the modifications that you guys want and get the tool path that you're, you're you know, ideally looking for. Um, you guys can start a, uh, a conversion on this tool path and, you know, maybe you just want to get up, pull all the data from it and then you just kind of want to cut it off. You can actually disassociate it from that operation and any changes you make to that HSM won't update to this tool path right here. Um, you do have your cut tolerance, just like anything else. Um, get your arc approximation here. Um, we kind of went over the relinking, um, grabbing your feed rates from the previous operation. Um, and then you have a little bit more feed options down here for when you're plunging. Um, Tool, that's going to be the same levels are going to be the same kind of went over this a little bit already um, pretty much the same thing as five axis there is one operation in here uh, for the tool axis direction that would be nice that's in there but um, it's not in there and uh, Ken which one am I looking for uh, tilted there's one missing in here I can't remember which one it was again you may just have to uh, you're thinking about the um, when we were Doing by the uh, UV? No, it was. You got tilt by a fixed angle selected. What were you? Oh, there was one. There's okay. So there's a couple that are just missing out of the normal five axis. Yeah, the, that's the, the not the normal normal to surface is missing. Yep. That's not. Yep. That's not typically what you would want to use this for. Yep. Yep. So there, there is a couple options in there that are not there just because it's not, I, I guess, ideal tool path. Um, I thought it might have yeah, been. Yeah, the impeller machining layer and a couple of the others are not. Yep. Yep. So there's just a few missing in there for you guys. Um, and then you still have all your options down here. If we did, you know, if we did relative to cutting condition, we can do, you know, follow your ISO lines, orthogonal to each position. All that's uh, the same. Uh, same thing with advanced. You can set your fanning on all that good stuff that we talked about with the five axis. Uh, linking is going to be the exact same as what we've kind of covered with the HSS and the uh, the five axis. Um, gouge check. There, you're not going to be able to do a gouge check against a drive um, just because we're pulling that over from the HSM. Now, out of curiosity, if we go to our source operation and we just, do we get our gouge check for a drive? No. I was thinking maybe if we unlink these two from each other and then may, we may get the drive to activate on, but um, that option is just great out because we are pulling all the data over from that HSM using that constraint boundary that we picked right there. So, And that kind of comes into factor of if you guys are doing, um, you know, when we're doing 
simultaneous five axis, which is, you know, like we talked about, same thing as HSS minus the tool axis control, you guys have to click on a lot of surfaces um, to grab all those. Now with doing it this way, you can you guys can just set up a boundary and you know just a simple boundary going around there and it's gonna capture all of our faces for us. Um, so it makes things a little bit easier for you and like I said, depending on the application that you guys are running. And then uh, you got your clearance data, just like we've always covered before and your machine controls right here. So now let me just suppress this for a second and we will go back to the convert and I'll show you guys the auto tilt. So to get over to auto tilt, just grab the pull down, do auto tilt right here. Uh, which HSM operation do you wanna grab? Now you also have a workpiece clearance. Um, so you can set it to how far do you wanna keep that away? So if we just do uh, 0.01 millimeters here, and that's gonna keep that holder away from the workpiece that distance right there. Let's grab our tool here. Levels, gonna be grayed out for us. Uh, tool axis control. A um, Couple different options are right here for you guys. So uh, you have, you know, where does the tool not fit? So for this particular one, I wanna keep it as close to uh, three axis as possible. Um, I want to kind of get minimal movement around here. So that's basically, you know, where does the tool not fit? Well, I want to stay um, as, as close to three axes as possible. Same thing, you know, where does the tool fit the shortest distance? I want to kind of stay more or less that three axis versus, you know, doing a, a side tilt because I want to I want to achieve this cut um, straight down as much as possible. Uh, for finish, but when it gets over to the side where we get into the collision area, I want to make sure that that holder is staying away for you guys. So um, same thing right here. Um, now we have a threshold right here, like I was telling you before is, you know, what is, if you want to set up a max angle that you want it to stay um, away from. So, you know, maybe you want to limit it down to, you know, 45 degrees. Um, you do have that angle, uh, option right there for you guys. So linking, nothing to really change in here. Clearance data, um, it's all good. If we just do save and calculate here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna grab that holder and check any gouge points going around and it's gonna kick that holder over to clear that. Am I missing anything, Ken? Nope. I think you're covering it all. Good deal. Now, I do want to cover, uh, once this gets done here, so what we went over last week um, I, with the contour five axis, I did give one bad piece of information that I want to kind of recover once this is done calculating here. Yeah, see like right now, it's going around and checking that collision. So it will take, um, when you do the auto tilt, just a hair longer to do the calculation just because it's kind of going through and looking at your SOLIDWORKS model for uh, what holder you've picked and uh, automatically adjusting the tilt angle for everything. Slowly but surely. <laughs> there it goes. Okay. So here's our toolpath. Um, looking, like I said, the same as what we've seen before. But now I didn't have to go through and figure out, you know, what the best strategy is uh, for this. Because I, I, I kind of want to achieve going straight down as much as possible. But I want to, you know, not hit the holder. Um, I didn't have to go through 
over here what we did and um, you know pick if I want to be a fixed or um, you know all the different strategies there so this kind of takes the guesswork out for you um, doing the auto tilt feature so if we go ahead and do a simulate now and play this through you can see we're pretty much straight up and down here let me kind of slow it down a little bit And let me change up my settings here. Let's get back to one. And at this point, we're still, uh, we're, we're just starting to get to the point, and turn off my holder here, where it's starting to just angle out just a hair. Um, and it's not really gonna come into factor until we start getting into, excuse me, these little uh, um, cut-ins right here. So we're still kind of achieving that HSM path that we had before. But now as we're starting to get into this area, speed it up here, we're starting to slowly tilt that tool out. And now you can kind of see the tool, um, if we do a straight down shot without the holder, kind of see it bouncing and angling out as it's going all the way around. If I just pause it, you can see we're you know right on side and it's got the angle, which I have no idea what this angle is um, currently, but it's just keeping that holder away from the workpiece uh, with the 0 0.01 millimeters that I specified. And definitely give your guys self a, just a little bit of a buffer room there with that uh, tool holder um, you know if you try to go right on zero we could get just a little bit of rubbing because we're telling it to leave the zero material there so any questions guys on this part before we jump over to our next one here. Is this all making sense on how the conversion works and kind of what it's used for? All right, I've seen everybody nodding their head, so we're good. <laughs> how did you see that? Were you tapped into their cameras? <laughs> Mr. Kidder has a comment. Yep, perfect. Yeah, you know, and guys too, um, and I, I'm just kind of bringing Ronnie up here. I mean, if you guys run across, you know, questions on just any part at all, and if you guys are just looking for some advice, all of us here um, on the support side of things have had many years experience machining and by far, I'm far from uh, an expert, but um, we'll definitely, if you guys want a second opinion on stuff, definitely feel free to give us a call. And it, I mean, it doesn't have to be solid cam related at all. And I've had some great conversations with Ronnie and, um, you know, and a couple of other guys on, you know, just different strategies, what would kind of work for this cut or, you know, is, am I doing this kind of right or stuff like that. So definitely give us a call on uh, the support line for that stuff too. Okay, Ronnie, you got me. It says not mine. Oh. <laughs> not your camera. Gotcha. Okay, so now kind of going around that spud, and we're able to achieve now cutting this full spud right here and our little uh, dowel alignment pin right here um, using that auto tilt feature. So real nice. Um, pretty easy to use uh, functionality here. So um, kind of going through that part, but like I said, just want to make sure we don't have any questions on this part and then we'll actually <clears throat> hop over to our next one, but looks like we're all good.
All right, so you guys will kind of remember this part from last week. We did the uh, five-axis contour, and this is a great time to bring this up right now. Um, in the five-axis contour, under the geometry, so what I told you guys last week was wrong <clears throat> for this uh, maximum snap distance. What I was thinking it was is the maximum distance between your orientation lines. Um, that is not the case. Um, what it is is the snap distance is if you had a 3D sketch and it wasn't right on uh, right on the line right here, you can actually have a gap in there, and you can kind of see it in the picture right here. So, you know, if it's right on the contour or the drive curve that we picked, we can actually have this snap distance, you know, a very small number. But as we all know, we have to make, you know, at, there are certain times where we need to add those sketches in there. We can't get that 3D sketch down to that line. Then we can put a the maximum distance that we're going to allow um, to grab those. So you can see like right here where this, excuse me, this line is actually kind of sitting up off that uh, drive curve. That's the, the max distance it's going to go. So I apologize for that last week. I didn't... Um, didn't catch that. I was, I was kind of looking at this, reading the, um, the description of what the max snap distance is, and late at night and just read it wrong. So <laughs> I apologize. Okay. So now uh, we're going to be doing the same thing here, uh, doing HSM convert over to five-axis milling. Um, so with this particular operation, what we're doing is just doing a HSM morph between boundary curves. Now, what we did on this one right here is drew in a couple additional boundaries to kind of help us out. Um, so nothing really you have to worry about in the geometry tool. We're going to be using the same tool. Um, so we did a uh, first curve and second curve. So, you know, if you want to look at this one as this kind of in the sense of HSS morph between boundary curves, um, kind of the same functionality there. Um, so we got our top curve which is just kind of a line drawn up on a plane. And what we did here is just took this line and did a convert entities and just offset it over. So we're not starting uh, right at uh, the exact center point of that uh, drive curve going around the outside. So we um, offset it over. Same thing with the bottom. Um, we do a show here. We do a straight down shot. You can see we kind of just went a little bit past of that boundary curve to give us a little bit more work area uh, to work within. Constraint boundaries um, did just the upper and lower curves together. So it's going to capture everything in between. Just did a center uh, doing passes. And if we just show the tool path here, just kind of going around, coming straight down and then working its way around, go down, working its way around, going around. So. Um, now with this one right here, we could snub up to um, to get a really short uh, tool length offset. Instead of having something hanging out longer, we can uh, uh, choke up on that uh, tool by switching over to the converting HSM to five axis. So for this one, we'll just do a regular convert. Uh, we'll, we'll grab our HSM that we chose right there. Um, we can leave our cut tolerance kind of as is for right now. Um, got our tool that's already in there. Uh, levels are going to be grayed out for us at this point. Tool axis control. So what I'm going to do is tilted relative to cutting condition on this one. And what I want to do is have it kicked over at 45 degrees. So we're still, uh, we're kind of coming in directly straight on with that surface. So we just type in 45 right there. And it should be good. If we just do save and calculate here. Okay, so we can kind of see, let me kind of get this part situated here for you guys. We got some little curly cues going on right here. And just like HSS or five axis um, simultaneous, we can clean up that stuff. Uh, so what we'd want to do to clean up that is go to our links, but we're grayed out. So let's go ahead and go back to our source operation and let's do our relink here. And now if we go to our link page right here, um, we can change up how do we want to approach that. So for our small gaps, we can set this to follow surface 
and we'll just do 150 percent and then for these uh, links between slices we can do a follow surface again and now that should clean up our tool path so we're not hopping in and out uh, right here and we're kind of clean up our curly cues so see you really cleaned up our tool path just by doing that um, can't get this realigned here um, <clears throat> So as you can see, we're staying off of that. Um, so we're not working right on that edge right there. Um, you know, and I, obviously we have a fairly large step over here right here and we'd have to shrink this up, but I wanna get this so you guys can see it better. Um, and just working its way around. We're coming in at approach. So we're gonna be working with the very tip of the ball. So if we do a simulate real quick. And slow it down, but you can see we're working right on surface here. Um, so we're, you know, normally this tool would be straight up and down. Um, you know, if we had a tool holder on there or whatnot, um, this would be, you know, absolutely ideal tool path just to get this going around. And this would actually work really well for a uh, like a spray metal application. Um, did you talk about that at all yet? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so okay. do, you want to, uh, can, do you want to continue on with that, or here I'll kind of get a uh, so like great. Yeah. Um, the, okay, go ahead. What you would want to what you'd want to space your step over on is how far of a spray diameter you want and what type of overlap you want. This this can be used like with robotic arms. Uh, we have a we have a partner relationship with Octopus that allows us to uh, create a tool path of this nature and then basically pass it to octopus and they convert everything into wrist articulation for the robot head so for a cold spray cold spray operation or something like that where you're doing you know cladding or a hard surface type spray on to something this works really fantastic yeah absolutely are any of you guys currently and I, I can't remember if we talked about the robotics thing last week. Um, is there anybody in here that is using robotic arms to load or unload or kind of like what Ken's talking about using it for a spray feature? All right, I don't see yeah, anything. another another application for this while you're waiting on somebody, you know, on people to answer in there is um, uh, glue application another robotic feature where it's instead of spraying it's actually laying down glue um, this could be another type of application for that say say you're gonna you know glue some sort of a uh, I don't know wrap strip or something like that onto that face and you want to lay down the glue at, the, at a certain offset this would work out really well for doing something like that yeah maybe taping yeah Mm-hmm. Could be, yeah. Well, guys, that's about it. Um I can't think of anything else. Uh can you think anything else with the uh, converting HSM? Did no, I, I think uh, I think you covered it very well. I think um, you know, it's a fairly unique tool path yeah. and um doesn't have a, a wide use of application, but it uh, it does have some very specific uh, functionality when it's needed. Yeah, and you know this kind of goes to show too. You know when you guys ask for for stuff to be added in there, um, this was definitely a uh, customer uh, request that we've gotten in the past, and that was added in there. Um, like Ken was saying, it's definitely uh, part specific, something that you're not going to use on a daily basis, but something I wanted to cover for you guys so you guys know that it's there because I know um, you know a lot of you guys are getting into these deep mold cavities um, instead of getting that you know long ball end mill that's sticking way out getting some chatter going on in there um, this will definitely help out uh, reducing that because we can really uh, you know um, get down on that tool and not have it sticking out nearly as far as what it would have to be if you guys were just doing a, a straight down application. So, and you know, this definitely can be done in the simultaneous five axis too, uh, but this kind of takes out a little bit of the guesswork for you uh, in a sense, especially with the uh, the auto tilt feature too for you guys. So. But any questions guys or 
concerns or anything else you guys wanted to see on this one? I know we're night. This one is a little shorter here, but um, just want to make sure we're kind of covering everything for you guys. Or like I said, any questions or concerns that kind of come up. Um, like I said, a lot of this is all hopefully starting to get familiar for you guys. Um, you know, same thing uh, like with the tool axis control and stuff like that. So I know we've kind of covered this page and kind of beaten it to death with, uh, you know, going over the uh, simultaneous and the SWARF. Um, we'll be getting into the, uh, the port machining and the multi-blade machine coming up. I know uh, a couple of you guys are looking for the, uh, the multi-blade, but um, yeah, just want to make sure I don't see any questions kind of coming in here for you guys. Um, so I guess with that being said, uh, next week um, I am playing Farmer John. So there will be no night class next week. I got to go help my buddy and brother-in-law <laughs> farm. Uh, we're actually supposed to be out there this week, but we got seven inches of rain uh, in the last three days. So we're a, we're a little moist up in northern Minnesota here. But uh, no night class just for next week. And then the week after that, we'll hop right back into it, kind of wrapping up the uh, five ax stuff and start getting into um, some turning and simple turning. And then we'll get into the more advanced turning and then into the mill turn side of things. So, But I don't see any questions. Thank you, Ronnie. Love the comments there. Um, Appreciate any feedback if you guys have any. Um, and then for those of you guys that are watching this on YouTube, if you guys do have questions, my email address is down in the description of the video. So they are, we just kind of grab this one right here. Let's pause it real quick. Um, all my information is down here too. So definitely feel free to shoot me, uh, here it is. Um, an email with your questions. Um, if you guys do do a comments down here, I generally don't check those very often or hardly ever. So definitely shoot them over to me in email and we'll get those questions answered. Or if you guys would like to see um, additional videos of certain functionality, we can definitely get that uh, added in there for you also. So, all right guys, well, appreciate uh, sitting through the night class tonight. Like I said, it was just a little bit shorter than normal tonight, but um, like I said, uh, we get into a little bit more uh, complex five axis stuff here for a couple more, and then we will be hopping over to the turning side of things. But thanks again, guys, for sitting through the night class, and uh, definitely appreciate it. And uh, hopefully, get some out of it. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, absolutely, guys. But all right, guys. Well, have a wonderful night, and we will talk to you guys. If I don't uh, talk to you over email or phone, we'll talk to you guys in two weeks. All right, guys, have a wonderful night.